All right. Um, hi, everybody. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, this week, we have one of our featured speaker events um, that we hold at XR Creators Unite. Um, and we love having people from all over the field come in and talk about um, their work and what they love to do and how they became involved. Um, and this week, um, our featured speaker is Sarah Hill. Um, she's an incredible woman. I have a lot of respect for her. She's done uh, so much in VR and oh, AR. Thank you. Um, so I'll just mm -hmm. give a tiny bit of a background. I'm sure she'll go over it a bit. Um, but just as some information about her, she is a CEO of Helium. Um, Helium is a VR and AR tool for self-management of stress and anxiety. Um, and it's powered by biometric devices that are given to consumers. And it is actually the first VR and AR program to do so, um, which is really incredible. Sarah has a really impressive resume, which I'm sure she'll uh, touch upon, but she spent 20 years as a TV reporter covering trauma. Um, and some of Helium's roots lie in VR-based virtual travel for veterans, which is also incredible. Um, so I will give the microphone over to Sarah. Everyone give her a round of emoji applause. Yay. Well, thank you very much. Um, it's great to be here today and great to, to meet a really phenomenal room of creators. It'd be awesome if there's time afterwards that we can go around and hear how each and every one of you are using XR. But um, my company is named Helium, H-E-A-L-I-U-M. And we are harnessing the power of your body's electricity in order to heal uh, virtual worlds in virtual and in augmented reality. And um, I did come back uh, up through the, through the journalism ranks. And essentially what we're using is media. Uh, it's immersive media. And um, back in the days of Google Glass, how many of you all were, were glass holes back in the day using augmented reality? Uh, we started live streaming some tours to a group of veterans. And that's how we got into creating uh, this kind of, of VR and AR. So I'll go through a little bit about what we're doing. Um, I would love to answer some questions. And then I would also really love to hear how, how some of you all um, are, are using virtual and augmented reality. Our company is located in Columbia, Missouri. Uh, we also have a presence in Eugene, Oregon. My co-founder, uh, Dr. Jeff Tarrant, is the founder of the Neuromeditation Institute. I don't know if you all have heard of neuromeditation, but it's essentially using EEG, electroencephalogram, um, and uh, brainwave sensors in order to modify uh, content in virtual, mixed, or, or augmented reality. And so we use Jeff's um, brain-based principles combined with um, our, our storytelling and our VR and AR in order to create something that we call Helium. And um, uh, essentially what it is is a, a digicidical. And it's a digital for stress and burnout, and it's powered by your, your body's electricity. And we all know that stress is a $300 billion profit and, and people killer, especially right now. Calls, sadly, to hotlines um, have, have doubled. Even before COVID, uh, stress was responsible for up to 90% to of doctors' visits. Each day, 125 people take their own lives. And in the aftermath of the opioid epidemic, um, you know, we we all are looking for drugless solutions to try to relieve, uh, you know, some of that stress and anxiety. And you know, what we're we're building um, with the Helium is positioned a, a, among a variety of different um, uh, rises of, of of technology that's coming up. Uh, not only the rise of wearables, there are 250 million wearables in the market that are currently capturing 2D data. Um, and Helium, you know, allows you to not just track that data, but interact with it. Spatial computing, which, you know, uh, we're all kindred spirits in, in, in that here in alt space. Uh, the opioid epidemic, where people are looking for drugless solutions to anxiety. 5G, which is enabling more real-time data capture um, from our consumer wearables. And then something that we're really excited about is uh, consumer EEG. So as we all know, um, uh, EEG no longer requires a heavy cap uh, that's on your head. It can be not only a headband, but EEG or brainwave patterns is being baked into earbuds. And that pro provides some unique opportunities uh, you know, for, for companies like Helium Creators in order to harness the power of, of your brain patterns in order to heal uh, and transform these virtual worlds. So I mentioned that um, our company started 
Um, it was originally called Story Up. Story Up Studios is, is still around, uh, and we create AR and, and, and VR for for um, uh, companies. And Helium was born out of that. And we started uh, giving virtual tours to a group of aging veterans who weren't able to physically travel to see their memorials in Washington D.C. And we noticed that augmented reality, which is what we started with first back in the days of Google Glass, and virtual reality um, appeared to us as lay people, technologists, to be impacting their nervous systems. They weren't just watching this kind of media. It appeared to us as if they were actually feeling it. And so, you know, naturally curious people, um, we decided to, to, to figure out uh, what was happening inside their bodies. Um, the thing with traditional, you know, uh, stress management programs or, you know, regular augmented or virtual reality or even flat 2D experiences is that, you know, you can't really see that stress. You're kind of imagining and wondering what's going on inside your body. Uh, helium is, is that feeling near. Um, and how are you supposed to control that stress if you don't have the ability to see it or interact with it? And that was one of the things that I struggled with um, as a television journalist. I was a, a, a TV journalist for decades, covered a lot of trauma, the aftermath of the, the tsunami in Sri Lanka and Indonesia, and one day started having panic attacks out of the blue. Um, so helium is for me as much as it is for, you know, the 41 million people out there who struggle with anxiety um, and who might not be in, in a situation where a medicine it, it, uh, works for them. Helium is not a replacement for any kind of cognitive behavioral therapy. It's not a replacement for psychotropic medication. It's a self-awareness tool and a reminder that we have healing powers inside ourself um, uh, via our brain patterns. So this is a look at uh, just some of all of the uh, BCIs, brain computer interfaces that are, are out on the market right now. Um, you know, from Embrain, Neuroverse, NeuroSky, Muse, Neurable, a Neurosity has a really fascinating device that we've been um, playing, playing with called the Notion. Um, and as I mentioned, EEG is being baked into earbuds. Luke's at Labs is another company doing fascinating stuff with hardware. So our tech lives between the hardware and the software and is a transmission of sorts uh, that allows you to power these different uh, experiences with different feeling states. And because the form factor of these brain wave capture devices is going down, um, and because people are becoming, you know, used to seeing their brain patterns in near real time, um, it's really beneficial for them, uh, not only for engagement rates, um, but to train themselves to have their own layer of, of mental fitness to know how uh, these experiences are impacting them. And not only that, but to be able to, be able to self-regulate their own nervous system and be rewarded with something happening in, in the environment. And so that's what we've done. We're, we're, uh, we're bringing this wearable data to life inside spatial computing environments um, in augmented reality or in um, virtual reality. And usually when we talk, we have to explain the difference between the two, but I'm preaching to the choir today. So um, I don't even have to explain the difference, which is, which is awesome. Um, on the right side, hand side, you see what it looks like inside our augmented reality um, mobile app just on your mobile device. We're live streaming the bioinformatics um, on the bottom. And then if you're above or below a certain threshold, certain things happen in the environment. Flowers grow, the planets illuminate, butterflies come out. Um, you can also power it with your Apple Watch. We're integrating smartwatches into these um, experiences as well. In virtual reality, um, either with a, a brain sensing headband, this is a brain link light. Um, it uh, has three sensors on the forehead, uh, two sensors and one reference sensor. It just fits, fits around like a head strap. Uh, fits very nicely and flat underneath the headset. And then um, with our, our algorithms, you're able to control these virtual worlds by quieting your mind or increasing your focus. Focus is, is the latest protocol um, that we've been using. Uh, there are more than 20 different experiences on the platform. Every 60 days, we add a new piece of content so it never gets old. And you can make the flurries fly inside a magic snow globe uh, you can um, make the lights come towards you uh, with different feeling states. Um, you can float through um, a fractal in space, through a nebula. Um, you can go to Hawaii and make the waterfalls stop and start. 
um, some, and we also take requests. So maybe there's there's something that you thought of or you wanted to, wanted to create yourself that has a, a brain pattern. Um, we love to collaborate with artists and other, um, other digital creatives. There are more than 900 published studies on the therapeutic use cases of, of virtual reality. And augmented reality, people might forget, also has a therapeutic impact. Uh, in the next two months, we'll be re releasing two additional articles in, in peer-reviewed journals about how AR um, modifies uh, brainwave patterns and, and has an impact on working memory. It has an impact on focus. It has an impact on engagement rates compared to regular 2D media. So for us, um, you know, that is, is, is um, you know, a very important thing to remember is that um, you know, these aren't just some other meditation app. This is the next iteration of mindfulness and meditation where you're actually using your body's electricity as a power source. And we're pretty geeked out um, about that. Uh, we've done a bunch of research. We're, we're now in, involved in about a dozen different trials around the world uh, for everything from uh, not just anxiety, but, but PTS. Um, uh, 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 we drop the D, post-traumatic stress, uh, sleep, insomnia, labor pain, uh, addiction, um, frontiers in psychology, journal of neuroregulation, the scholarly journal of science and behavioral science, um, all showing that uh, using our experiences, you've been able to not only quickly downshift the nervous system, but reduce anxiety in as little as four minutes. And um, you might think of this as a warm bath or a walk in the park for when you can't take that warm bath or walk in the park. Again, not meant to be a replacement for psychotropic medication, um, uh, but certainly something that's, that's uh, having a repeatable impact. What you're seeing is the fast activity in the brain. Uh, Dr. Tarrant would be a great future guest um, to go into a deep dive, but you're seeing uh, changes uh, obviously not permanent changes, uh, but, but uh, temporary changes in the fast activity in the brain, uh, in the slow activity in, in the brain, um, in an area uh, of the brain associated with positivity. We do, we do a lot with what's called gamma asymmetry and how your frontal um, a asymmetry uh, is impacted in, inside some of those experiences. So, you know, uh, again, not any kind of um, something that you have to have to pop a pill, but in the moment um, you are able to have, a, you know, a shift. And um, not only that, you have the ability to learn and self-regulate. Uh, this was a study that was done with helium before blood donations. So with the American uh, Red Cross showing that it significantly reduced tension, increased feelings of happiness and calm as well. And again, this, this is quickly. Um, you know, it, not a long experience in, in a matter of a few minutes. Uh, helium's also been used in several nat natural disasters. Uh, most recently with, with COVID, um, uh, helium's being used on the front line for nurses for, for compassion fatigue. It was deployed in the aftermath of the, the Nashville tornadoes where storm victims and first responders had the ability to escape and just get some virtual peace. Um, you know, tornadoes, uh, uh, aftermath of, of hurricanes, you know, you can think of all of the different ways uh, that we need escape in our lives specifically right now. Um, and this is one of the things that allows you to, to, to do that. And so um, uh, this is an, an experience that you're able to fill up a magic wand with your feelings, you see your, lio, your bioinformatics um, displayed on the bottom of that wand. And then if you fill up that wand, you're able to cast a spirit animal out, in, out into the environment. Um, and uh, you, know, you see that thought essentially personified um, inside the experience as opposed to, again, closing your eyes. This is open-eyed meditation not meant to be passive in any way, but you are an active participant in that experience, learning to self-regulate uh, some of, of, of those emotions. And you know, what we're trying to um, uh, you know, educate uh, people about and trying to help people learn is that your thoughts have power and that you do have control, even in some of those situations that might seem out of control. 
but your thoughts have power not only in the virtual world, but the real world as well. And when you can see something that you move with your own brain patterns, that you move with your own heart rate, it becomes very clear to you that you do have control over some of these circumstances. Even when you don't have a headset, even when you don't have a wearable, you can imagine what feeling you needed, what memory you needed to recall in that stressful situation in order to hatch imaginary butterflies. And that's you know, essentially what we're, what we're doing is um, you know, burning unique memories in the brain that you can then recall when you get in, in, in a stressful situation. Uh, you can find out you know, more about what we're doing on, on our social media sites. Um, our website is tryhelium.com if you'd like to go through some of our, our, our science. Our journal articles are, are um, there. We also love to collaborate with other researchers um, as well. So if you would like to do a research project with helium, um, you know, we would love to uh, equip you in, and, and show you how it works. Um, doing a lot with AR portals lately. So not everyone has a headset. Um, and so we've created portals um, in augmented reality that you're able to step through just on your mobile device and in be, be in some of these, these virtual worlds. And then you're also able to control these experiences um, with your feelings of calm, your feelings of quiet mind, or your feelings of, of, of focus. Um, we are a young company. We're always looking for feedback um, and you know ideas for future experiences that we could be creating. And this is a great room and a great resource for us to do that with other XR um, other XR creators. Um, and with that, I, I will close and just remind all of you that your thoughts do have power, not only in the virtual world, but in the real world as well. Great. And happy Thank to you, answer any questions that, that you might have. Yeah, so Mia, um, Mia and I will come up and what we usually do at these events, this is great because we're gonna have a lot of time to um, to take questions and also to mix and mail. What we usually do at these events is um, for right now, we're gonna sort of take a controlled set of questions. So if you have a raise hand button that showed up on your screen, you can click that and you'll be added to the queue and we'll take them one at a time. And then after we kind of get through those, we're just gonna open things up and people can kind of, we can talk and just talk with each other, or ask Sarah questions if you have any or whatever. So um, Mia, do you wanna take the first question? Sure. So our first question is from Luis. You should have the megaphone. Yeah, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Hi. Come here. Hi. Uh, hi, Sarah. Uh, Hello. Incredible, incredible work, uh, what you're doing. Uh, you know, I work on, on, on the mental health um, profession in Mexico. I'm in Mexico right now in Tijuana. And one of the things that uh, we have been doing is work with migrant communities uh, on shelters. So the thing that we do, it's we do not psychotherapy as, uh, uh, you know, as a way to help them. It's more like a, a, a group therapy because, you know, these people come and go oh, like they stay, they stay two, three days on one shelter and then they have to go, you know, for their asylum process and you, you don't see them anywhere like for another three, four months, even a year. So what we're doing is trying to uh, help them because the, the level of anxiety that they're living, mm -hmm. it's very high. They're, they're coming and going with their families and they're living in uh, conditions that uh, are not viable for a human being to, to survive to. So it's very difficult for them to, to go through all the, these things. And one of the things that I, I, I usually do is take my headsets. I have two headsets. I have one Go and one Quest. And I use them with them. And when they use the headsets, you know, playing a game, uh, the kids just playing a little game and they totally forget about you know, the, their anxiety. And I've, I've seen how it works uh, and how it may be helpful helpful to them. But this is more specific. This is more specific to the anxiety, to the depression, to the things that 
we can be helping them uh, too. So my question is, how can we implement something like this in a work in in field work that we are doing? I mean, how can we uh, reach out and I don't know to try to implement it in the work that we're doing to help this uh, community? Yeah. Well, first off, um, you know, I love what you're doing, and um, you you know what you're providing is so important and escape. Um, in an area of, of confined stress um, when they're not able to go out and you know, escape some of that stress. So, you know, one of the things that, that we really try to do is to get healing in the hands of people who need it regardless of their ability to um, pay. Um, so uh, we, do, we do that with veterans. It's called Honor Everywhere. Um, uh, it's a free app. You can download Honor Everywhere on your Oculus Go or on iOS and, and Android, and you can open up these portals, um, and uh, they they can be inside their memorials. And it's the same with helium. So um, my email address, and I would encourage you to reach out um, and contact me, is Sarah with an H, S A R A H, at tryhelium.com. Uh, easy to remember, Sarah with an H at try h e a l i u m dot com. Um, and let's chat about what some options are. One option is, um, you know, if they have a mobile device, um, they can download Helium for free, and uh, they can be inside some of these portals even without a wearable. I mean, they don't have to have an Apple Watch or a brain sensing headband. If you're not using a wearable, the experiences automatically play. So, you know, that's a great way just to allow them for a few minutes to trick their brain into thinking that they're, they're somewhere else, um, which does have, have therapeutic value on, on, on people. Um, you know, if, if, if they get the feeling that they are on a beach in New Zealand or, you know, in a fractal animation in Maui, um, uh, uh, but contact me and let's figure out you know, what we might be able to do, um, but, but certainly, you know, in its, its uh, simplest form, it's accessible and accessible just with a mobile device. Download the iOS or Android app, and if you search for Helium AR, H-E-A-L-I-U-M-A-R on the App Store, they can, they can get that, that version for free even without a wearable. And as far as, um, you, you know, um, uh, the counseling perspective. I am not. Uh, I'm a technologist and not a scientist. And I wish Dr. Tarrant could have could have been here today, and, and he would also be happy to chat with you um, on some some ways that he's using it with his own clients. Um, he also gives classes through the Neuro Meditation Institute, and I encourage you to check out his work at NeuroMeditationInstitute.com uh, and see how he's using it with, with different different populations. But hats off to you. Keep up that important work and let me know how we can be a resource for you and equip you with some ways to hopefully allow them to feel better. Great. Thank you, Luis, for the question. Um, the next person up is going to be Todd. Hi, Todd. Hi, Sarah. Hey, really Hello. appreciate your presentation. I just love this stuff. Uh, had a, Me too. <laughs> <laughs> had a, just uh, some real quick uh, questions for you. Uh, first off, is this uh, classified as a as a medical device? And if so, I'm curious how long that process took. And then second, um, is this available to the general public? And if you could mention a, a range of prices. And then um, last, I'm I'm very curious about um, making things. Uh, better when people are already uh, mentally healthy. So I'm, I'm curious if um, there have been any negative impacts of normal healthy people using these types of, of devices, or will it simply make them uh, better able to see feedback and regulate their own emotions and such? Thank you. Sure, great questions. Um, and I'll answer them piecemeal, and I forgot, if I've forgotten any of them, um, feel free to hit, hit me back. Uh, Helium is a general wellness device in its current form. Um, so that may change in, in, in the coming months, but uh, it is not something that is a replacement for psychotropic medication 
Um, we're not making any claims that it cures depression. Um, it is not wiped on the skin. It's not consumed. It's a self-awareness tool. And again, a reminder that your thoughts have power. Um, however, we do have, you know, a, a handful of, of uh, published studies showing that it does have a, a therapeutic impact on, on the in individual um, from you know, generalized anxiety disorder uh, surveys, Brunel surveys, and also EEG brain maps, where you can see, you know, um, the, the brain actually uh, changing during these experiences. Um, so obviously, uh, we're on a, a future regulatory path. Um, but in its current current form, it is a, a general wellness tool um, and a, a self aware a self awareness tool. And I'm trying to think of your second question. What was your second? Oh, how do you how do you get it and its its price? So in its simplest form, Helium is free. Download the free app. Um, there's a free app in a very limited form on Oculus Go um and on ios and android if you want to use helium with a wearable and you want to see all of its content there's a very limited amount of content on go uh, then you go to our website we have an e-commerce site uh, click on the buy tab it's a dollar a day for consumer licenses um, and then we have enterprise licenses as well because helium is used in uh, not only corporate wellness but anything that sucks that you have to go through from infusion clinics blood clinics um, uh, uh, you know, for first responders, nurses, firefighters, for, for compassion fatigue, hospice, um, in a variety of, of different ways. You know, anxiety is a layer in 60% of all illness and disease. So, um, you know, uh, we don't want this tool just to be used for one particular small subset. Um, we horizontally market the product because it has a use case for a variety of ages, um, a variety of occupations, and because, you know, um, stress is a $300 billion profit and also a proxy killer as well. Um, you know, uh, the face of stress um, is not just one single, single person. But to answer your question, um, affordable at uh, uh, about a dollar a day. And then, what was your other? Um, so the, the 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 last part of that was: um, Is there any negative effects of normal, healthy people using this? Um, like, can it make uh, can it make things better and better uh, control or um, awareness of their own systems? Like you mentioned, a breathing mm -hmm. and heart rate and uh, EEG. Right. So working memory is one of the ones that um, uh, has been looked at most recently, and that article should come out in the next two months. Um, and also looking at uh, using helium over time. Um, up until, you know, a few months ago, all of the data that we had was, you know, just a few minutes after the experience. Um, and, you know, what we really wanted was longitudinal data. Um, uh, you know, after you uh, take off the headset or after you stop you know, using the device, if you continue to use it, uh, do the effects eventually trail off over time? And that's one of the things that, that we're looking at. Um, uh, Dr. Tarrant likens it to a warm bath or a walk in a park. It's certainly not permanent. Um, you know, just as you take a warm bath and it calms you, it might downshift your nervous system. Um, it's the same thing with, with immersive media. When you use it, um, you're not uh, forever, your mind is, is, is quiet. It's like anything else. Um, uh, it's, it's like breathing. Uh, it's like taking a real walk in the park, which is, is wonderful for you, but not everyone has the ability to do that. Um, and um, so, you know, we're anxious and, and excited about, about um, some of these uh, uh, new articles that'll that'll be coming out over the coming months looking at immersive media not only vr but ar over time and immersive media um, when paired with wearables and when paired without and so um, what you've been what you've been able to see which has been fascinating to us is that uh, alone without a wearable uh, what, without any body's input whether that be brain pattern or heart rate um, that there's been a shift. Uh, not only do people report feeling better in, in mood surveys, uh, you can see it on a brain map, um, and you see it in, 
in their heart rate that it, it changes when they view these experiences. Um, and it's the same thing when you use a wearable. The self-report is, oh yeah, um, you know, I absolutely, I feel better. And you see significant shifts in their, um, you know, Brunel or uh, uh, other surveys. But what's fascinating is when you look at the biometric data, when you look at their EEG via full, you know, 19 sensor uh, EEG on an Esloretta scale or, um, uh, you know, a heart rate, uh, and you plot that, and you, you get into the individual biometric, biometric data, um, what uh, they found is that uh, when you're using a wearable, it changes that biometric data more so than if you aren't. Um, so that's what's been interesting to us is uh, seeing how that wearable interaction um, uh, changes uh, uh, the, the data in a way that the user um, might not necessarily be able to discern themselves on a survey, um, but when you look at their, their, their brain patterns, it tells a, tells a different story. And I should explain the difference between the two. Um, so, you know, we're using consumer wearables um, as an input. Uh, consumer wearables that are not meant to be diagnostic in any way. You would never diagnose um, a mental health disorder or a condition with um, a, a headband or with, a, you know, a, an EEG sensor that, that comes from, a, from an earbud. Um, you know, full 19, uh, full cap EEGs are, are, are obviously better for that. But what you're using as an input is like a remote control. Um, and, you know, you can see this if you sprinkle up your forehead or you, you know, tense your forehead or you take off the sensor um, and put it back on, um, you know, you see the line goes flat or it, it it's, uh, cuts out altogether. You would never diagnose a heart condition um, uh, with an Apple Watch, um, right? It gives you insights that then you can take to your um, mental health professional or your uh, general practitioner and, and get, get rec recommendations. So um, I wanted to make that different uh, distinction that we're not um, measuring in research um, solely on the basis of what comes from those consumer wearables or from a consumer wearable headband um, on, on your forehead. Um, uh, the, when we, we talk about how EEG data, we're talking about putting on the full cap with the gel and actually you know, looking at um, brainwave patterns, not just in the, the the forehead, but all around all around the head. So, just wanted to explain that as well. And I don't know if that answered all of his questions or not. Um, happy to answer uh, more, though. Yeah, great discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> and I think Sarah, that you had Todd at working memory because he actually did a talk last week on mnemotechnics and memory palaces and memory and all that sort of thing. So. I would love to, do we have a, a second? And Todd, can you share? Can you give us, us all the clip notes of that for the people who weren't in that talk? Um, it, it was recorded. It's up on uh, YouTube for the XR Creators uh, channel. Thank you again, John, for editing it. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Great, yeah, working memory is, you know, is really fascinating right now because I think we're all seeing it specifically in the wake of COVID, um, you know, lack of focus. And <clears throat> there is, um, you know, a lot of data out there showing that you boost, uh, you reduce stress, you increase that working memory um, and you have, have the ability to increase your focus. So it's, imp and it's important and an important metric. And I'm glad, Todd, that, that you're looking into that and I am gonna go back and watch that live stream. Great, thank you. We only have one thank more you. question and then we will, um, oh, we have two more. We have a couple more questions and then we'll just open up the stage and open things up and people can come talk. And now questions are popping Great. up everywhere. Everybody wants to ask, awesome. <laughs> so the next person up is, is Marie, I think. Hi, Marie. Okay. Um, 
Thanks very much, Sarah, for this very interesting talk. Um, as an anesthesiologist, of course, I love your product. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I mean, I, if I would uh, have this in my work available, I work the OR, the ER, and intensive care, and I do preclinical uh, medicine as well. Um, if I would have a, a device like this available for my patients, I think it would make a very, very large impact actually on the well-being of literally everybody. Because in, in these environments, you don't need a mental illness to be afraid and, and literally scared to death. Um, and um, all this confrontation with all this fear, naturally, of course, um, it's not a nice place to be. Um, you would you would need an FDA approval, of course, to bring this in a pre-surgical environment, for example. But um, have you ever considered that um, to to introduce it actually into the healthcare areas where you find people who are just naturally anxious because they don't know what to expect and what's happening to them and all that? Because if I would be able just in my day. Imagine myself in the ER or OR, um, and I have a patient waiting to be put to sleep, not only by my voice, as Mia already told me once, <laughs> that probably my voice would be sufficient for that. Um, and um, just to, to have a patient actually see one of your applications, um, and it would to, to observe this calming effect, because we know from anesthesia that um, patients just sleep so much better and they wake up so much better if they enter into anesthesia in a calm state of mind. Um, yeah, so, so have you ever considered um, this field of, of really attacking, I know the very tedious FDA issue, but um, is it on your screen? Yes. Um, yeah, I, I can't talk about what we're doing right now, but it is um, involved in a trial um, as it relates to, to surgery. So, you know, the, one of the, the things, and, and you are the expert on that, um, I'm just the technologist, but from what we've gleaned from, from research is that you reduce um, anxiety before surgery and you increase the likelihood that that patient will not die. Like their, their mortality rates are actually um, tied to anxiety levels um, in, yes. in, and, in and around mm -hmm. surgery. Um, and so, you know, that provides a, a unique opportunity for the people in this room to be building products that can, you know, quickly downshift uh, nervous systems, quiet the mind, not only in the OR, but before they even go to surgery. Can you imagine, um, you know, uh, a month before you had knee surgery or something like that, um, you, you know, uh, you got a, a, a link to download helium and you learned how to self-regulate, um, you know, those brain patterns even before you went in. Um, so that it didn't matter uh, that you had a headset or that you had a mobile device. You could instantly, you know, remember what you needed to do with your memory by recalling a memory, uh, quiet, quieting your mind in order to make the environment react. Um, I think uh, 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 products like Helium and others out there have a bright future, not just in um, the hospital environment, but before you even get into the hospital environment, um, that it's almost like, um, you know, before uh, you have some surgeries, you have to take a, 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 a shower with a certain kind of antiseptic uh, that you scrub all over your body to get additional bacteria off of it. Well, what if it wasn't just, you know, the bacteria, but you did some mental health hygiene mm -hmm. um, in, in order That's to, you know, as well. <laughs> yeah, shake off that life's dirt. <laughs> Um, that's, that's getting in, you know, uh, that we all have life stirred in, in our brain. And, you know, we're really passionate about that, that mental health hygiene of, you know, it's not just something that you do when you have a panic attack, that it's resilience that you build up before you even get into that stressful situation. Um, that, um, you know, uh, good mental health hygiene is learning to self-regulate. 
And it's not something um, that I knew how to do, you know, uh, when I was uh, reporting as a, a 40, you know, in my late 30s, early 40s, I'm now almost 50, but I was a 30 year old adult and I hadn't learned how to self regulate myself. So, you know, there's great, great value in these, these drugless tools that teaching people, allowing them to see their brain patterns in, in new real time and know that inside themselves, they have the power to, uh, you know, slow the fast activity in the brain. They have the power um, um, to, um, you know, learn to increase their focus. I would love to get in touch because um, um, here in Austria, I'm, I'm doing a project with a friend of mine on patient information in VR uh, before surgery. And we've been thinking about uh, relocating that uh, into remote medicine so that uh, people can consume that at home. So um, I will write you an email if I may. Yeah, Sarah. At the others of asking their questions. I'm sorry for. Jesus. No worries. It's, 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 so sorry it's, about that. No, no worries. It, it's a great question and, you know, hats off to you for thinking about some drugless solutions. Um, you know, there's value and if in some way you're able to reduce the amount of anxiolytics that that, that uh, patient has to have and, um, you know, um, uh, it, it's, it has a bright future in those use cases that you imagine, but not just in the hospital before they get there, you know, uh, teaching them uh, how to, how to self-regulate. So I would look forward to talking with you. Thank you. All right. Next question? So, yes. Our next question is, I think Gino, if I remember that right, <laughs> I'll give you the megaphone. All right. Yeah, thanks. So um, my understanding is you have a a bunch of kind of visualization things that you hook into kind of different consumer biofeedback devices and then you keep releasing a bunch. So it's a subscription based model. Is that is that my understanding? Yeah, so you can plug in uh, the wearables that you're using, whether that be an Apple Watch um, or a, uh, a brain sensing headband, like a brain link light is one of the ones that we use. And then um, you're able to uh, control these, these virtual worlds, transform them in some way. So for instance, you can illuminate the planets uh, with your uh, heart rate or with your brain patterns. Um, if you quiet your mind, the planets light up. Uh, if your mind is not quiet, they will darken. So you get feedback um, uh, to know, you know, uh, as a barometer, a self-awareness tool, basically, on you know how those those particular uh, brain patterns for quiet mind or for for focus are are performing. So that's how it works. It's a subscription. Um, every sixty then, days, we add in. Does it? Does it? Because each of the devices, like the, even the heart rate variability. They use different algorithms and then the EEG headsets use different algorithms and they have different locations and everything. And so you you have like a, a map of all the different devices and how they and translate into like a canonical form that you then process and then and then use to drive your visualization or is is that how that works or I'm just no. trying to understand so we a little Sure. So we have two wearables on the platform right now, um Apple uh -huh. Watch. Um, and and the brain link light. We're constantly adding new new wearables as as we go. Um, there are a lot of wearables that, that capture data. 250 million uh, devices that are that are out there currently capturing for the most part um, 2D data on a flat flat dashboard. So this isn't any wearable. Um, someday the hope is that that any wearable will working towards that. Um, but right now there are there are two wearables on the platform. Does that answer but then your it's, question? It's basically real time kind of visualization of things depending on kind of what, what what's going on with them, what what's going on with uh, the biometrics. Yeah, near real time. Uh, it's certainly not instantaneous. Um, so, so two things. Uh, 
One is if you looked at um, longer term, because I actually wear a, a Garmin watch as well too, that yeah. tracks mm -hmm. stress and everything. And you can imagine, especially with VR and stuff, that you might have your own garden or something like this. And then the more kind of relaxed you are, you know, because it records it over time, you know, without you actively looking at things, you can actually do kind of longer systemic, systemic kind of things. You know, that's one thing. And then the other is in spaces like alt space where you have social environments, you can actually use kind of biometrics to to help in intersubjective communication. So if I could, if everyone's kind of HRV kind of changed their halo or something like that, that could be used in, uh, in uh, have, you, have you explored other, because it sounds like you have a team that um, from my, what I saw from your website, each month you kind of release new, new visualizations and everything. It seems like there's a lot of things that you could build on top of this. Yeah, we have the team 20. That you have? Yeah, we have uh, 20 different experiences on the platform and every 60 days we add a new piece of content um, in AR and in VR, so it's both. We know in the future those will be one XR platform ambidextrous. Um, next month, we will be releasing an all-in-one app that allows you to toggle between AR and, and VR. Um, so you can choose whether you want to use it either with a headset or without a headset. Those lines are, are blurring. Um, and you'll see a lot of what you describe um, in that next iteration of the app. Uh, it also has a, a data dashboard where you can not only track your progress over time, um, but again, inside each and one of those uh, experiences, the environments change according to your, your biometric data. And then just for you too, two things. One is um, for normalization of all these different wearables, including the, the high-end ones, uh, Tim Mullen has a company called Intheon based in San, San Diego. And they, they can extract all of that data, send it into the cloud, do the processing. You can actually probably turn your, your services, well, you're kind of a software as a service kind of a thing, but the, then you can just kind of interface with his stuff and then you can basically support all of these different platforms. That's one thing. And then That's on great. The, on the, Sounds on like the, we need to chat with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, he's great. He's wonderful. He's based in San Diego. Uh, Tim Mullen, I can hook you guys thank up you. on Facebook. Yeah, thank and then you very much. The other is, uh, there's a company I'm an advisor to called Minerva, M-Y-N-E-U-R-V-A, which is looking at more clinical side. And so they actually have uh -huh. a thing where they have a standard, I think it's a, a 11 or 19 channel device, and they actually have a standard chair, almost like a dentist chair that they sell. And then they actually have an interface where they do the EEG reads and then they, they, they compare it with, uh, they have uh, thousands of brain scans of people with different disorders, and then they can actually measure you, compare you, give you a sense of, you know, what you may be facing, whether it's ADHD or anxiety or whatever. And then they also have a more complex uh, neural feedback uh, to, to help them remedy that. But that's more at the clinical level. But you might want to talk to them because they also have... Yeah. Uh, you know, to make it more fun and everything would be, uh, yeah. like, could be a good match. And I would love the opportunity. Jim Hart that would... runs that company. And then their main doctor is a guy named uh, Freddie Starr. Okay. I would love an opportunity to chat with them. Anything that captures data. Um, and it, it might be a piece of hardware, like you mentioned with, with Minerva that has a diagnostic component in it. Um, uh, you know, uh, what do you do after you do that diagnosis? Well, maybe it's something that they could uh, use to put to power helium. Um, so would definitely love to to collaborate with any and all of those um, hardware manufacturers that are that are creating um, tools that uh, collect biometric uh, data because this kind of dashboard is is way cooler. it's it's not only not just cooler, but it's more memorable. It's more emotionally engaging um, than seeing it on a flat data dashboard. Thank you very much. All right, guys. So I think we only have two more questions at the moment, and that's all we're going to have time for in terms of the queue. Um, but if Sarah has any extra, happens to have any extra time after, um, and any of you want to stay, that's fine. Um, 
So our next question is Mike. Hey, and Sarah. Sarah, this is the great I, thing about VR. You're, you're actually turned around and facing. The, I know. You, My <laughs> screen is frozen, so I'm not oh. sure why. Um, and I don't want to exit out in order to refresh it. So I can hear you okay, and I apologize that I'm turned around. <laughs> Shame on my uh, social uh, uh, lack of tact there. So social um, distancing. Yes, I know. I wish there's <laughs> there's a way, but yeah, it's just uh, the screen's frozen and flashing right now. So I well, apologize good news, for you're that. Perfect, you're perfectly aimed right now, so just stay right there. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll do. <laughs> Great. Hi, Sarah. Um, I was uh, wondering um, if uh, what heard many claims that even just being in VR in a typical VR application can have effects on the brain. Um, and it right. kind of touched on a little bit today, but uh, I just wondered if you've done studies to compare like the typical VR experience um, impact on the brain versus like helium, helium's uh, experience on brain waves and, and uh, mood and everything. Um. Sure. Um, so we have tested other uh, individuals' uh, content. Uh, we had one particular company uh, that wanted us to look at their product as it relates to, to empathy and what it did to the anterior cingulate. Um, and so we've done that with other content and absolutely, uh, you know, a virtual reality, any kind of media, media content has the ability to impact the nervous system in, in some way. But VR far more than a regular 2D, 2D media. And we've looked at that, uh, the difference between, you know, um, uh, 2D media uh, and uh, virtual reality. Uh, you know, you have audio, um, you know, on, on one end above that, you have 2D media with uh, video and the majority of people are, are visual learners. And then, you know, above that, you have you have virtual reality. So, um, and I don't know if you were in here when we were, when we were talking um, before about, uh, you know, looking at our content, it has, you know, people report feeling better just without that wearable interaction. But when you add the wearable interaction, what you're seeing is a deepened, uh, uh, more significant shift in that that biometric data, um, if you're using the wearable, as opposed to if you're not using the wearable. So somehow yeah. it seems to have value for the user for them to actually see, you know, that that brain pattern, what it's doing in near real time, and seeing how their, you know, their posture, their breath, what they're thinking about, emotion recall, memory recall. Um, you know, um, impacts that little firefly. You see it as a firefly that's moving up and down the screen. It's glowing brighter, or it's or it's it's getting darker. So um, uh, I'm not sure if that answers your your question, but um, as the high the hierarchy, uh, you know, you have audio, then you have um, uh, 2D video, and then uh, you have augmented reality. At, as a next layer, a mobile augmented reality. You're still watching it through the filter of a fixed, a fixed rectangle, but then above that, you have virtual reality. And you know the thing with with VR, which we all know in this room, is that you it's totally um, immersive, and so you don't have the ability to see something any anywhere else. And so that's why you know. Um, uh, quickly has the ability to downshift the nervous system because you are instantly transported someplace else. Thank you. All right, and then our last question goes to guacamole. I love it. <laughs> Great name. Am I facing forward now? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yes. In my contemplative meditations, my practice is to try to free my thoughts from clutter. 
close my eyes, visualize being a leaf on the river. I'm wondering if I'd be able to use this uh, device on my head in somewhat of a negative fashion to free the extraneous clutter and baggage that we all take with us in finding that blissful uh, I don't want to scare anyone away but find that you know nirvanic godlike uh reaching of the place that i seek to be in my contemplative prayer like state with such this device once again thank you kind of a negative yeah. No, no, no. Um, and you, you asked a great question for which um, I don't have a good answer for because it depends on your own uh, preferences. Um, and I wouldn't want to speak for you whether or not it, it works for you. Um, you know, some people have a very highly tuned mind body connection. And then there are those of us who don't. So, you know, my co founder, Dr. Tarrant, uh, very well established, you know, mind body connection. Uh, he uh, is a, a traditional meditator, and me. And uh, when I think about a leaf floating down the river um, or a peaceful pasture, I see nothing. Like I just, I, I am not able to go to some of those places in, in my mind. Um, and it can take, you know, a long time for people to do that. Um, and, you know, that's why there's value in these kind of experiences that we're all creating is because it's fast acting. It, it doesn't require, you know, a long, um, you know, uh, um, amount of training to learn to establish that. Um, even without a wearable, it's, you know, put this on your face and be somewhere else. Um, and people have the ability to understand, you know, what that means. And, you know, even as a training tool, you know, essentially with a wearable and an EEG head strap, a, a brain link light, these are mental fitness tools um, and you, you can train with them. So there's, there's, you know, two ways you can use it um, passively, just, you know, watching the experiences go by um, um, or actively um, where you're actually using your body's own electricity to 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 power these these virtual worlds and i think that's a very different shift in that this is not traditional um, meditation and sometimes we even um, hesitate to call it meditation um, is it training yes um, is it a, you know a wellness tool that allows you to be somewhere else it, it's it's media and also you know uh, building resilience but one of the ways that we like to describe it is with whereas, you know, traditional uh, 2D guided meditation, um, you are uh, in, in the backseat, essentially, you're a pass passenger and you will, are watching. Somebody else is driving that meditation. They're speaking for you. Um, and you're in a passenger in the backseat of the car and you're watching, you know, the beautiful scenery go by. And what's different about um, uh, helium and you know the integration of uh, brain patterns, heart rate, whatever biometric data you want to use, is that you're you're in the driver's seat. Your hands are on that steering wheel. You can press that accelerator button or 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 not press that accelerator button. You still are seeing that beautiful Im imagery going by, but you are in control. And it's very hard, at least it's been hard for me and others, to learn how to drive a car when you're in the back seat. And so, you know, uh, giving people tools, uh, low risk uh, consumer wearables that they already have um, to allow them to get the sensation of, of that control uh, can, can be valuable for people. But I wouldn't be able to speak whether or not, you know, it works for you. 
um, allow them to get the sensation of, of that control uh, can, can be valuable for people. But I wouldn't be able to speak whether or not, you know, it works for you. Apps, uh, our apps are, are free, um, a free download. If you'd like to add a wearable or like to get uh, additional content, you can subscribe to the platform. But one great way to try it is uh, get an Oculus Go, uh, download some of the experiences, or you know, download the free app on iOS or Android and start to play with them even without a wearable. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Good luck to you. Yes, I find it difficult to uh, be that leaf, and this will be an exciting option. We are kindred spirits. I, I struggle with being that leaf and that stream. You know, you're a rabbit, you know, going through the meadow. I just, uh, I can do it for an instant and then it's, you know, and, and it, it, it's gone. And this is for somebody, you know, I, I'm traditionally a visual person. I've worked in a visual medium for decades, but, you know, closing my eyes uh, doesn't always, always do it for me. When I close my eyes, I see nothing. Um, and um, sometimes I, I want to see something and I want to know that I, I have the, I want to be reminded that I am contr in control of my own thoughts, um, uh, my own heart rate, and my own quiet mind, my own focus.